Welcome to Dr. Retro's Top 10 NES Games. In the next 11 minutes I'll show you my personal top 10 favorites on the NES. Feel free to comment on my choices and of course reply with your own top 10. The first game on this list is DuckTales 2. This game and of course the cartoon series has the best intro music ever. You just can't get it out of your head. DuckTales 2 is a platforming game where you play as Uncle Scrooge McDuck. With your cane you swing at items, bounce on enemies, solve puzzles, making it a really multifunctional weapon. Throughout the levels you'll meet up with your nephews and launchpad and they'll give you tips on how to proceed or let you return to the main menu to pick a different stage. Every level takes place in a different part of the world and has a treasure at the end for you to collect. Most people like the first DuckTales game more, but for nostalgic reasons I picked DuckTales 2 as part of my top 10. My number 9 is Probotector 2 Return of the Evil Forces. This game is the European version of Super C, also known as Contra 2. The soldiers were replaced by robots in this game due to violence legislation in some of the European countries. With an arsenal of weapons such as machine guns, flame guns and of course the famous spread gun, you'll blast your way through hordes of enemies. This game is hard as hell and unforgiving in every possible way. You'll get swarmed by enemies from every angle and it only takes one hit to get killed. With only three lives at the start it's near impossible to beat this game without the infamous Konami code. The Contra series were groundbreaking action games on the NES and definitely deserve a spot in my top 10. Next up is Castlevania. After its first release in September 1986, this game has had more than 9 remakes or ports made of it. And this shows how big an impact this action platformer had on gamers worldwide. You play as Simon Belmont, the heir to a famous family of vampire hunters, and your mission is to kill the ultimate evil, Dracula. With your iconic whip, you fight yourself through 6 levels of monsters to face the old bat himself. The game has a solid difficulty curve with the horrible Medusa heads as your worst enemies. Along your way through the castle and its grounds, you'll find different upgrades for your whip and throwing items like holy water and axes to help you beat the game. With its amazing atmosphere and combination of platforming and action, Castlevania was a genre defining title on the NES and deserves its spot high up the top 10. On number 7 we find Shadow Warriors Ninja Gaiden. You play as Ryo Hayabusa, a ninja warrior whose father recently went missing along with two ancient artifacts. Your mission is to hunt down and kill the evil cult leader Jacquio to save your dad and prevent the artifact from being used. Ninja Gaiden, which is known as Shadow Warriors in Europe, is an action platformer with great music, fast paced action and even an interesting story that is told in cutscenes which was quite ahead of its time. Where our previous entry Castlevania had enemies that annoy the crap out of you, this game has enemies that turn you downright homicidal. Whenever you get hit by an enemy, you bounce back in pain. This is not an uncommon mechanic in old games. But in Ninja Gaiden, you have birds flying into the screen at jumping spots, and they respawn whenever you take a step back. So continuous bird onslaught is what will drive you mad. Except for those damn birds, this is an awesome game that has cost me a lot of hours throughout the years. The iconic early NES title Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is my number 6. The starting message that Mike Tyson is waiting for you is a prelude on how much this game will beat you up. As Little Mac, you fight your way through different tournaments, facing stereotype characters as Glass Joe and King Hippo and Piston Honda. In the end, you'll face Iron Mike himself or Mr. Dream in the later re-released Punch-Out without Mike Tyson in it. The boxing is a combination of timing and pattern recognition, and every enemy has a number of movement patterns. The weaknesses in those patterns are what you need to use to knock them out. Knocking down an enemy three times in a single round will give you a technical knockout, and having him stay down the full 10 seconds will give you a full knockout. With its addictive, progressively challenging gameplay, Punch-Out is one of the biggest time sinks on the NES and fought its way up to number 6. Galaga on number 5 is an old school arcade classic that got an amazing port on the NES. It's Space Invaders with a twist, as the enemies are not stationary and you have nowhere to hide. As with pretty much every arcade game, your goal is quite simple, just beat the high score. In order to do that, you have to clear the screen while avoiding getting hit. 
An extra to the gameplay is the chance to get a Galaga. By sacrificing a life to the aliens you can get a double ship, aka a Galaga, with double firepower. And in order to beat the bonus stages you get after every three regular levels you'll definitely need this Galaga. The gameplay isn't very deep and the graphics aren't cutting edge but the game is addictive and definitely one of my favorite games on the NES. My number 4 is very likely to be your number 1, but this is my top 10 so you'll just have to deal with The Legend of Zelda being number 4. The reason that this masterpiece by Miyamoto is not higher up is because I never had it as a kid. I only got it later on when I started collecting and therefore it had a smaller impact on me as a gamer. All that aside, The Legend of Zelda was a huge breakthrough in the world of video games. With its enormous overworld, secret caves, bosses, collectible items, legendary weapons and of course an epic storyline, Zelda put a huge mark on the youth of many kids. And that makes The Legend of Zelda truly a legendary game. Kirby's Adventure goes home with the bronze. This fluffy pink vacuum cleaner was first seen on the Game Boy in Kirby's Dreamland. And this happens to be one of the games that I played most on this big grey brick of childhood memories. On the NES, Kirby had a new feature that made the game even more awesome. In Dreamland, Kirby was a cute protagonist with a fun platforming game, but in Kirby's Adventure he became a shape-shifting cannibal. Every enemy in the game that has a special ability can be sucked in and digested, making Kirby take his powers. This adds endless variance on how to clear the levels. You can do it as a fireball, as a wheel, as a swordsman or as a spark of lightning. Whatever you choose. Every level in a zone has its own mini boss and they give Kirby his most powerful abilities. At the end of a zone you'll find a big end boss and your final goal is to beat the evil king Day Day Day. Another great feature of this game are the mini games you can play in between levels. These little games, which are mostly about timing, give you the chance to boost up your lives or take on special abilities. These mini games also give a nice change of pace and make the game an even more complete package. In conclusion, I think Kirby's Adventure is a beautiful game with great music and as a platformer it's quite unique. Super Mario Bros 3 is the second best game on the NES in my opinion. I wonder if I even need to explain to you why this game is so good, because the chances that you haven't played this game is about as big as the chance of me winning the Olympic synchronized swimming contest. Super Mario Bros 3 has everything you want in a platforming game and more. Does it have a good main character? Well it has the most famous video game character in history, so I guess that's a yes. Does the game have a diversity in levels? You travel through grasslands, deserts, evil castles, deep seas, flying ships and super-sized worlds, so I guess that's another yes. And how about the power-ups? Well, Mario 3 has the infamous Tanuki suit, a giant boot, a frog suit, the classic fire flower and a lot more. So what makes you come back to a platforming game? Secrets, hidden items and bonus worlds. And you guessed it, Mario 3 is full of them. Every kid in my high school knew how to get to the first flute in Bowser's castle, and I'm sure you knew it too. And that is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to hidden stuff in Mario 3. For instance you can use the hammer to unlock hidden levels, drop through blocks to get to a warp zone, etc, etc, etc. Does this leave you with any other questions? Because I can answer them all. Yes, Super Mario Bros 3 has everything it can have. This makes Super Mario Bros. 3 simply the best platforming game ever released, and I dare you to disagree. Finally, on number 1, my all-time favorite NES game is Mega Man 2. The second game in the famous Mega Man series by Capcom was released in 1988 and is one of those Mega Man games with the horribly awesome box art that doesn't look anything like the game at all. You play as Mega Man, a robot created by Dr. Light that has to save the world from Dr. Wily and his evil robot henchmen. The first thing you notice when you start the game is the amazing music. Mega Man has by far the best tunes on the NES. Some of the level tracks are even so good that I listen to them in the car occasionally, while I normally don't listen to video game music at all. When you start the game you can pick with which one of the 8 robot bosses you want to start. There is a preferred order in how to complete these levels, but if you're a skilled enough gamer, it is possible to do it in a different order. Every gamer that has played Mega Man 2 in the pre-internet days will have found out his personal version of how to do the bosses. But I believe 99% of the people started with Metal Man, just like I always do. 
Each level has its own distinct setting with its specific enemies and difficulties. At the end of a level you'll find Dr. Wily's henchman and in order to defeat him you'll need to use the correct weapon. In order to obtain this correct weapon you'll have to have killed a certain boss before playing this level. Because when Mega Man beats a boss he takes over the boss's personal weapon and you'll be able to use it whenever you like. After beating the 8 Robo bad guys you're off to Dr. Wily's castle. Here you'll face his final few guardians and finally see the mad doctor himself. Mega Man 2 is the best Mega Man game in my opinion. It has a perfect balance in difficulty, it has amazing music, great animations and an original set of bosses. With Mega Man 2 we've come to the end of this list of 8-bit gems. Feel free to reply to this video with your personal top 10 and don't hesitate to show why you've picked those games. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out my other videos. To stay up to date on all new Dr. Retro videos, like me on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash drretromd, so Dr. Retro MD. See you next time, bye bye.